presented by Phoenix Rising. Welcome to the streaming with the Psionics Aurora using Wi-Fi video. Due to the length of this video, I'm going to put the index right up front with the outdoor testing and picture in picture sections immediately after the introduction. Also in this section, I'm going to discuss glitches with the software and some issues that you definitely need to be aware of if you plan on streaming with the Psionics. Finally, we're going to finish up by going through the software, all the options, and the functions and features within it. Introduction Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the connectivity and capabilities of the Psionics Aurora Sport when connected to an Android-based smartphone. Uh, so we're going to go through setup, uh, usage, functions, all the features that you can access through the app, how it works, and then we're going to do side-by-side -side testing where we're taking video and recording it with the Aurora, as well as recording from a camera mounted behind the smartphone to show you what kind of lag, what kind of video quality you can expect based on what the Aurora records and what you're able to see in using the device. So stay tuned, lots of good stuff coming up, and like and subscribe please. Streaming test and software issues with picture in picture. Okay, so it's uh, O Dark 30, and we're out in the backyard with the Aurora Sport mounted on our test rig along with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 smartphone and filming behind that with a Panasonic G9 mirrorless DSLR. So we're going to go ahead and do dual video where we're recording with the Aurora and with the uh, with the G9 to show you what you'll see versus what it's recording as well as play around with some infrared illuminators and talk about some pitfalls and glitches with the Aurora software and the Wi-Fi connection. So let's go ahead and get started and get the Aurora connected. So for starters, uh, when you're connecting this you'll take the mode dial on the Aurora from off, rotate it fully clockwise, and that's going to take you to the Wi-Fi menu, which is what comes up by default, as well as your other settings, you can back out and get into those as well. So the Aurora's on, it's broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. Let's go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi on our Android device. Now you'll notice it's connecting to the Aurora by default, and that's only because that was the last connection that I actually used on the smartphone. Okay, we're connected. Let's go ahead and minimize that. Next thing we'll do is open the Aurora app. If I can uh, actually hit it good there. I'm having to reach around the camera to do it, so it's a little glitchy. So we got to watch the little uh, spinning Aurora and the Aurora logo, and then it'll come up with our connection menu. So here's your connection menu. Uh, you'll notice it'll have a camera list which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because you're connected directly to one camera and on that it's showing the Aurora Sport on the left. On the right you'll see a continue button. Uh, when I press the continue button it seems like it doesn't really connect or do anything so what you're going to need to do is tap on the bar that's listing the camera you're connected to. Now. Once you're connected, you're going to come up to the media center. That's by default, that's every time, okay? And what that's going to do is show you the images and videos you have stored in the Aurora, as well as give you the option to look at what you've copied from the Aurora onto your Android device using the Aurora software, okay? Uh, you can transfer files, delete files, do all that other fun stuff with your media center. But we're not interested in that. That's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory, so uh, I don't feel a need to go over that. So, uh, to get into live mode and see what the Aurora is looking at, what we need to do is press the live button in the upper right portion of the screen, at this time at least in landscape mode. Okay, so the Aurora's on, we're connected, we're streaming video. And uh, before we do anything else, what I want to do is talk about glitches with this software, okay? Now, 
I've shot a bunch of video with this thing tonight, been playing with it real heavy for the last couple of days, and uh, I hadn't really played with the streaming app before that. But what I've found is that uh, there's several glitches that you got to be aware of. The biggest one, first and foremost, is Bluetooth. Turn your Bluetooth off on your Android device. When I was shooting video earlier this evening, I ended up scrapping all of it because it was very glitchy. And uh, I'm going to show you that now, the difference with just Bluetooth being turned on and uh, talk about some other things that are even worse that can happen. So right now, Bluetooth is off. I'm going to pan around a little bit here, okay? You'll notice uh, our video is, is pretty dark, but fairly smooth. A few little glitches here and there as we're panning, and I'm panning at a consistent speed. Now, let's go ahead and oops if I can get this to cooperate here let's go ahead and turn on our Bluetooth now uh, I'm not going to directly connect to anything but it might uh, might connect to my Fitbit so let's go ahead go back into our app for the Psyonix and now let's pan Notice the uh, glitchiness to the video, okay? Or to the screen or what's being streamed. And that's all because of interference on Bluetooth. Now, uh, what's even worse is if a Bluetooth device is actually using data, it can lock your screen up for five seconds, 10 seconds, just flat out lock you up in using the Aurora. So let's get back out of here and turn this darn, uh, turn this darn Bluetooth back off. Now, on the Psyonix website, they mention that that's an issue with Apple devices, but apparently that's also an issue with at least some Android devices. And again, we're using a, a Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Uh, I can't speak for other devices necessarily. Okay, we'll go back to our Aurora. Now, uh, along with that, I did have some random disconnects where the, the Aurora was connected to the smartphone. But, uh, but the software disconnected. And at the time I had Bluetooth on, so I don't know if uh, that may also be a Bluetooth related issue. And uh, as I play with this more, uh, what I'll do is if I, if I notice that that's not happening anymore, I'll post that somewhere in the comments or update the description down the road. But that will ha only happen a couple times over the last couple of days, so I can't really vouch for on short notice whether or not that's related to Bluetooth. Now, the next issue is is uh, when you're using this software, there's two issues that I have in Live View. Okay, first off, when you initially go in, if you uh, are in landscape mode, it won't let you, oops, if I can get it to do it, take a picture. Now there it took a picture and the reason for that was we went to the Bluetooth menu or left the app and came back into it. If you don't do that, you're going to have to rotate the uh, your device to portrait mode, exit live view, come back into live view, and then it'll work. That's just weird. It's a small glitch, but be aware that it's there if you decided you just want to open it up in portrait mode, go to live and tape, take a picture. You might not find that function working. Now, one last thing with this software before we get into just shooting video and doing side-by-side. -side. Now, if you'll notice, uh, when we did all the walkthroughs on the menus and features, uh, it looked a little different, but all the same stuff was there. Now, in landscape mode, there's no button to get back out of live view, okay? So the only way you can get out of live view is to basically rotate the image to get portrait, and then there's a uh, arrow that backs you back out of live view if you want to go and access file transfer or something else. So that is yet another glitch that's uh, in there. Why in the hell they didn't put an exit button on live view when you're in landscape, especially when you, you know, uh, from what I've read, this device is kind of popular for boaters to use uh, to give them an extra situational awareness. Well, there's another glitch for you. Okay, all that being said, we're in photo mode. I'm not going to go through photo mode much because this thing only takes a, a 1280 by 720 JPEG. Basically, one 720p video frame saved as a JPEG when you're using a camera.
Now to me, that's not really a usable image size for much of anything, so we're not going to play with that. And in general, uh, when you're in live view, uh, it's, it, it's not going to have much of a bearing. What is going to have a bearing, and what you're probably going to be using the most, is your video mode. Now, you'll notice I just switched to video mode, and the noise level just jumped up tremendously on the display. Now there's a reason for that, and that is your frame rate, okay? Right now I have the, the Aurora set to 60, second, or 60 frames per second, which is a very fast shutter speed for low light of, of 1 60th of a second. Uh, because of that, your sensor has to amplify the signal by a much larger degree, putting noise into the picture. So right now, uh, at 60 frames a second mode, this thing to me isn't incredibly usable because of noise. Now before we go and start uh, panning around, actually we'll go ahead and, I guess we will go ahead and start panning around. Let's go ahead and start recording some footage on the Aurora so we can get this dual display up, which is why, by the way, the uh, I have the Android so high up on the screen so I can insert footage from the Aurora simultaneously. So we're recording with the Aurora, and let's go just go ahead and pan, and we'll get this uh, extra stuff off the screen here, to see what our image is like uh, in general. Now it's a moonlit night, or no, I'm sorry, not a moonlit, it's a starlit night, the sky's somewhat clear, and I do have some extraneous light from street lamps uh, at the high school, about 400, 500 yards away, parking lot lights, and that's where you're getting the foliage illuminated from part ways up in the backyard. Now, uh, with it in this mode, you're really not too usable, okay? There's just way too much noise on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop this, and I'm going to show you the different screen modes or color modes for the Aurora. Right now we're in color. Let's go ahead and switch this to black and white. And we'll go ahead and record a loop and show you what the, Aurora's, uh, what the Aurora is filming in addition to what you're seeing. So in black and white mode, you still have noise, but it's all luminance noise, and that's much easier for you to interpret as far as uh, what you're looking at. So uh, again, this is not incredibly usable, but it's uh, significantly improved when you go out of color mode. So I, I, to me, I would reserve color mode for situations where you have a fairly decent amount of ambient light. Now, mind you, I'm looking out in the backyard right now, and uh, I can barely I can barely see the foliage line running across the center of the screen. Okay, so uh, that is your black and white mode, and you're going to find that usable at higher frame rates, especially or in very low light conditions. So let's stop recording, and we'll go to uh, green mode and start recording again. Now in the green mode. Uh, personally, I don't like digital green mode. I like green on your traditional night vision. It works fairly well, but every implementation I've seen of the green mode uh, on digital devices washes out your contrast too much to where really, aside from the fact it's a pretty color, I don't see much added benefit. Now I understand that you can see more shades of green than any other color and that it's easier on your eyes, but to me black and white mode is more effective and that holds true of this, it holds true of the Sightmark Wraith, every other this and every other digital device that I've actually had the opportunity to play with. So now that being said, let's start backing our frame rate down to find out how this thing performs and, and what might be acceptable. So. Uh, let me get out of this green mode because it's hard to read the uh, harder to read your uh, frame rates. Okay, next step down is 30 frames a second. If I can actually tap on it, uh, there we go. Oh, come on now, there we go. Okay, 30 frames a second. We'll start recording now. If you'll notice, our, our noise level dropped down significantly. Of course, we just halved the frame rate. Now we're allowing 1 30th of a second uh, of light to illuminate each frame of the video. And this is actually pretty usable, uh, although it still has a lot of noise, okay? So pretty usable even at 30 frames a second uh, as far as color. Definitely much more pleasing to the eye than 60 frames. Now let's go ahead stop recording and I'm not going to do green but we will switch to grayscale and in grayscale 
Notice the image improvement. Again, you don't have all the splotchy color noise. If I can record here, there we go. You don't have all the splotchy color noise. You have good contrast and good detail. So, you know, I could see a rabbit out in the yard uh, and the tree line's about 40 yards plus away. But I could see, I could see a rabbit at least uh, two thirds of the way out there, probably without much problem, especially if he's moving, okay? So there you have 30, 30 frames a second. And uh, grayscale or black and white mode. Stop recording. And let's go and go to 24 frames a second, which is just a slight step down, and that's more cinematic in nature as far as the frame rate. We want to start recording. And uh, we'll do a quick pan at 24 frames a second in black and white, and we'll switch to color and do that too, I guess. So again, uh, 24 frames a second, not a huge improvement over 30, but then you wouldn't expect it due to uh, there not being a significant shift in frame rate. Okay, stop recording. Let's switch to color mode. Oops. Okay, so 24 frames a second in color. And that's pretty usable, but I'll say that with the lighting conditions we have tonight, I would still say that, uh, argue that black and white is uh, gives you a little better detail because the color is not really adding information as much as it's adding noise. Okay, we'll go one step farther down in our frame rate to 15 frames a second and do some recording there. So now we're at 15 frames a second in color mode and you'll notice noise has virtually left from the image. Uh, still a little bit, but I mean that's, boy, that's a pretty darned uh, sharp image. But we're going to pan, uh, pan across here and you'll see that you get a lot more motion blur at 15 frames a second on the recorded video. And uh, I don't really think we have a need to go or record in our uh, 15 seconds black and white. But again, well, I actually know what that looks good enough. Let's go ahead and do it. What the hell, right? Okay, so now we're at 15 frames a second in black and white. And that is, uh, that's, boy, that's darn good detail. Now, uh, the Aurora also has a seven and a half frames a second, and uh, I'll show it to you, but I'm gonna tell you it's glitchy as far as trying to actually record, which you probably wouldn't be doing anyway. So now at seven and a half frames a second, I don't notice really that much of an improvement, maybe a little bit better contrast, but what, I'm fo what I've found is that, well, hell, let's, uh, what the hell, let's just do it, right? Uh, let's say Nike, just do it. I'm going to go ahead and just turn recording on and turn it back off. Now, at every other frame rate, when we started and stopped recording, it worked seamlessly, okay? But if you'll notice, we're stuck in a loop and the Aurora doesn't want to give us control back. Now, there's different ways to get out of this loop if you happen to try and record. Uh, you can rotate your Aurora to portrait mode whoops, and back. That'll clear it. You can uh, switch over to some other app or function on your phone and come back. And that will also clear it. But for some reason, it has a weird glitch when you try and record start and stop using uh, seven and a half frames a second. So there you have it. Uh, there's some side to side video just showing uh, some different stuff on the Aurora. Let's go back to a reason what I would consider a reasonable uh, frame rate for many applications and that's 24 or 30 frames a second. Uh, a little bit noisier, but uh, still pretty usable. Now right now we have HDR on. I'm going to take HDR off and in black and white you'll notice that we got a better contrast ratio going. Okay, 
Uh, we also have image stabilization. I'll turn that on. Now you'll notice we zoomed in just a little bit. That's to give the uh, Aurora room to shift the image around to stabilize your video. And again, I don't think the stabilization uh, in a lot of cases is going to do you much good. It's not going to really help you using this as an observational device via your smartphone. But your video might be a, a little smoother. But I don't know if that's even going to show up uh, and when you pan, okay, and I didn't record that, so that's no big deal. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn, whoops, turn IS back off. We have HDR off. Let's go ahead and take our HDR to actually, you know what? Let's do, a, let's do, a, if I can touch this thing, let's let's show the difference in green for HDR off and on. HDR is off. HDR is on, so okay. HDR off will also assist you a little bit in green, but again, uh, I still think the black and white works slightly better. So uh, let's go ahead. Oops, didn't mean to do that one. Okay, so we're back in color. HDR is off. HDR is on, and actually uh, HDR may may not be something you want to leave on unless you have a have a lot of enough color to be able to uh, give you a better image. So okay, so those are the modes. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll pause this and I'll come back because we have some infrared illuminators we're going to play with. Streaming and recording using 850 and 940 illuminators. Okay, we're back. We've got two infrared illuminators, an 850 nanometer and a 940 nanometer. Uh, the 940 is a, a longer wavelength and doesn't work with all night vision, but does work pretty well with digital and Gen 3, some Gen 2 to some degree, but not so much Gen 1. And the 850 works with everything. So we're still in video mode. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and go to the, the poorest image quality as far as just general viewing which is 60 frames a second in color so there we are 60 frames a second in color let me go ahead and start recording uh, so here we are we're recording and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this 850 illuminator now this is a cheap illuminator these aren't real high dollar ones wow what a difference uh, these are like fifty dollars on Amazon or Fleet Bay and uh, I just cycled through. They have three levels of brightness. It's on low right now. And uh, what I'm going to do, it's at its widest most beam. And we're going to go ahead and pan up a little bit. Because we have such, so much foreground light that it's kind of inhibiting things. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom this illuminator to a tighter beam. Now if you'll notice, it was good and tight when I had it at its wide, widest point. When you get into the, anywhere in the middle, look at all that wiggle. Again, this is a cheap illuminator. Uh, let's go ahead and focus it to as tight as it'll go. Now, it's so tight right now, it's putting such illumination that we just have an incredible bright spot. But I mean, look, that's a, that's a couple hundred yards away we're lighting up, okay? So illuminators will really, really improve how this thing works. And by the way, these illuminators, they run on 18650 batteries, which are like an overgrown AA uh, LiPo rechargeable. And uh, fairly common battery as far as illuminators go. We got a bug, get, go away, we don't want you there. Uh, so anyway, 850 illuminator, uh, 60 frames a second even, okay. Uh, that's, that's pretty darn impressive. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drop that down to 24 frames a second. And really, uh, I think, did I get it? have a hard time reading the screen from a little ways away. No, I did not. Okay. If I can touch this thing right, I might actually, uh, there we go. Okay, 24 frames a second. And really, there is, there is virtually no noise in this image. So... Go ahead and start recording again. We'll do a pan around at 24 frames a second. 850 illuminator on low. 
and some of that glitchiness is me panning. Again, holy smokes, right? Now, just for uh, giggles, let's go ahead and bump it up to medium. And we'll get this to where we're looking at the trees in the distance and high. Now, those uh, the farthest most trees you're seeing are actually a couple hundred yards away, probably. Probably, well, probably at least 150, something like that. 100, 150. And uh, we're actually causing the aurora to gain down because of the brightness. Okay, so that's our 850 illuminator. Now, 850s are visible to the naked eye, just so you're aware. Uh, in practice, uh, my 850 illuminators at 300 yards away, if I'm looking in their direction and, they're throwing, and I'm throwing a beam with them, I can still say, hey, there's a red light there, okay? And uh, so they are visible to the naked eye, uh, much more so than your 940s. So let's go ahead, shut off our 850 illuminator, and let's jump over to our 940 illuminator. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to... Okay, I'm on low with the 940, and you'll notice it's not quite as bright, but it still works with the Aurora. Okay, and I am recording it uh, at the still at the 24 frames a second. So let's go ahead and pan around with our 940. And again, I would recommend a 940 illuminator. For use with the Aurora over the 850, just because the uh, it's not nearly as visible to the naked eye, and that's a 940 again on low. Let's kind of do the same thing. Let's uh, aim it up a ways. Go to medium, high, and again, it's uh, it's so bright that in a lot of cases it's actually causing the Aurora to gain down. And lastly, we'll go ahead, we'll pause this, and we'll shoot just a little bit of video at 60 frames a second with our 940. I've got 60 frames set. Hello. And, and, uh, and I'm not recording, so let me, darn, I, let me go ahead and uh, do some recording here. Okay, so now I'm recording. I'm sorry, we're going to have to do a little redo here just so that we have the second video to insert. Okay, so we got the 940 Illuminator on. We're recording on low. And again, this is at 60 frames a second. At 30 frames a second, you would not have any issues. And uh, we'll demonstrate that with the 940 here too. So, 940 on low. 940 on medium and again uh, on medium and I you know I wonder if I'm a little bit out of focus here I may have bumped the Aurora there we go that's a little better focus uh, so 940 on medium we'll go ahead and switch it to high yeah you wouldn't miss you wouldn't miss anything uh, out in out in the yard or using a 940 illuminator either. Now, when I go back to medium, what I will say is when you have the foreground uh, in the view, a lot of times you're going to kind of lose a little bit, so uh, you will want to tailor your IR illuminator settings. So, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and stop recording and we will go back to our uh, are more reasonable 24 frames a second and play with a 940 there and that ought to wrap it up pretty much. Okay, 24 frames a second, 940 illuminator, and again I think we are, whoops, uh, we're on medium I think, but let's see. Okay, now uh, 940 illuminator on low at 24 frames a second, and there we go. So that's interesting. Let's uh, let's stop that again. It almost seems like hmm, that was kind of weird. 
I don't know if you noticed that, but it looked like for some reason uh, once we started recording that recording that cleaned up the video. So 940 illuminator on low at 24 frames a second and that is very usable. So there you have it. Uh, Psionics Aurora Wi-Fi streaming and its usability using uh, ambient light with on a, on a very poorly lit night 850 and 940 IR illuminators. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and found value in all of this uh, stuff, I know it's a lot, uh, lot in a long video, but if you find uh, value in it, please like and subscribe and share so uh, we can keep good stuff coming to the channel. Thanks for watching. Connecting to the Psionics. First, Let's talk about and go through our connection process in connecting our psionics to our Android-based smartphone. Now, uh, there's one setting you're going to want to change in here before you do the connection process. And basically, uh, that's going to be your auto power down or auto timeout on this device. If you have it set for three or five minutes, which is what I normally use when I'm hand-holding this device for just general use so to conserve battery power, that's still going to apply when you're connected to Wi-Fi. So you can set it to never, and I recommend going into the setup menu, which basically is the same position as your Wi-Fi, only hit your left button, back out of it, and just change that to never before you actually connect your smartphone, or else you might get disconnected. And it was a little bit uh, troublesome to reconnect. It didn't automatically reconnect when I powered the device back up. So uh, keep that in mind before we get started. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and go through our connection process. Okay, the connection process. First thing you're going to do is rotate your mode dial on the Psionics all the way clockwise to settings and Wi-Fi. Now when you do that, when you look through the viewfinder, there's going to be connection information saying the network, da 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 da, all that kind of mess. And at that point, the Wi-Fi is turned on on the Psionics. You don't have to go into a menu and select on or anything else because when you first go to that uh, settings in Wi-Fi mode, it's automatically going to be set up for Wi-Fi. Once you accomplish that, then we'll go to our smartphone and I'll show you the rest of the connection and software opening process. Wi-Fi is on. Now it's saying, hey, connect your phone to or your device to the, can to the, to the Psionics. So we'll go down and we'll just go to Wi-Fi settings and turn it on see what networks are available lots of networks in the neighborhood okay so down here you'll notice we have psionics and 30173 bravo which is probably the serial number i don't know just whatever number it assigned it so we'll go ahead and connect to that now i had some chimes turned on so you'll notice the psionics made a noise once it detected the connection which uh, it's kind of nice if so you don't have to actually look through the viewfinder. So, okay, we're now connected. Let's go ahead, close that down, and open our Psionics app. Does take a minute to load. Okay, so right now it's showing all the Psionics cameras that it's detecting and of course you're connected to a Wi-Fi on a particular camera so it's going to show your camera up here now there's a continue button down here but if you press it it doesn't connect to the camera and says hey no cameras available so what you want to do is con is actually oops if I can touch it here with that. there we go and uh, select it from the actual listing for the camera okay by default when this thing comes up it's going to go ahead connect to the camera and uh, you're going to be in media center mode. Now, if you'll notice at the top, it has in camera and in device. Now, in device means in the phone, in camera means in the psionics, okay? So it's showing that I have a couple of, uh, couple of videos or a video and a picture in the camera right now, and I can actually, uh, we'll go ahead and open the picture. I can pull that up and, okay, yep, there's a picture. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete that from the phone app. Okay, now so I've got to actually I've got a movie in there too, but we're not going to worry about that. Uh, so we'll go back. Now we're 
What we want to do is in order to use this for observation and or view and take pictures remotely, we want to press the live mode button on the bottom right. Tap live mode, it'll wait and it'll connect and that's my little scene that I have set up here with my uh, little Fallout 4 uh, trinket, whatever you want to call it. So now we're in live view and by default it's going to come up to photo mode. So let's just we'll go ahead and that's the whole connection process. Okay, that's all you have to do to connect. So we'll go ahead and stop this and then we'll come back and we'll walk through the settings on the various modes just uh, so you can get a feel for the application. Photo mode. We're now viewing exactly what the camera's seeing, and it's in grayscale mode because that's the last mode I was in playing with it. Uh, so you come up and automatically you're going to go into the photo mode. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the features of that first. Now, uh, if, you, if you don't own a Psyonix and you've not had the chance to play with one of these, <clears throat> Keep in mind that this is a 720p resolution sensor, or maybe a little higher, but that's the resolution it's going to max resolution it'll do things at. So photo mode doesn't buy you any more resolution than 720p video, which means you're going to get a picture that's 1280 pixels wide by 720 tall. Now that's like old, old flip cell phone pictures, right? Or less. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't find photo mode very useful, but for those of you that do, uh, we'll walk through the settings. Now, uh, top left, if I can get this uh, to cooperate, you have off, 2.5, 5, and 10 frames per second, which is basically your continuous shutter modes. Right now it's off, so we tap the button. It takes one picture, and of course you can set it to run, and, and when you're in... Uh, a continuous record mode, you don't have to hold the button, you just tap it to start and tap it again to stop taking pictures, okay? Uh, self timer mode, that's self explanatory. Tap it, set the timer, and it'll count down and take a picture. Now, uh, you also have exposure control where you can increase or decrease the exposure, and let's then uh, I'll show you that real quick. That goes from minus 2 to point, plus point 0.7, actually. Oh no, it scrolls. It goes to minus two to plus two. So you've got a, a minus two to plus two EV range on your uh, manual override for exposure. You have high definition mode, and let me go ahead and switch back to color for that one. Uh, right now, HDR is off, or not high de definition, high dynamic range, excuse me. Uh, we'll turn HDR on, and you'll notice it brings out, uh, it, it, it should bring out your uh, shadows a little more, give you a little more uh, usable image. And I'm just going to turn that back off because uh, I, I imagine it probably takes more processing power on the Psionics. And we're going to eat the battery quick. As you can see, we're down to half, and I've been playing with this for a while trying to get this video done. But your Wi-Fi connection does burn up your battery faster, although you can connect an external USB and power the Psionics that way. But uh, <clears throat> while we're talking about it, this is what I read from the Psionics' website, is that it doesn't power from the USB directly, it powers through the battery. So basically, you want a fully charged battery, then connect your USB source to it, and hopefully the battery will charge as fast as it drains, okay? I've not played with that enough to, that, that's, that may be one where you're time limited at some point, but just bear in mind that you, if you're going to use this for like navigation or something like that, you're going to want an external power supply. And when the psionics is off, of course, the external will charge the battery. But start off with a full battery to give you a buffer because it does funnel through the battery when you're in operation or so the psionics website says. So that being said, uh, you have shutter speed, which is auto, uh, goes from one eight thousandths to, oops, if I can managed to scroll it here, there we go, all the way to one and a half seconds. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that this doesn't function like a regular camera where you select a shutter speed and it changes the aperture. You manually control the aperture by the mode you're in on the front of the Psionics. Day modes 5 and a 6, 5.6 F, or F5.6, I believe it's F2 
for your twilight mode and like f1.2 or 1.4 something like that for your nighttime mode so if you you're going to overexpose it or underexpose it uh, if you're using the manual shutter so that's pretty much it for your uh, regular photographic modes now of course you can as i already you already saw me messing with it you can go from your grayscale to green to uh, full color so there you have it photo mode we'll go ahead pause this and then we'll come back and take a look at movie mode video mode okay let's go to movie mode and walk through the settings on that okay so we're now switched over to movie mode you'll notice we have a different set of icons some the same uh, you have an upper button which doesn't really do anything but show you your re remaining time on your memory card I've tried getting into that a few times and let me make sure I'm not missing it it seems like these buttons are kind of uh, touchy for for their uh, pinpoint for where you got to touch to make them function so again same thing we've got exposure from minus two still to plus two uh, we have our electronic image stabilization that's your little uh, mountain looking icon there uh, I just turned it on now you'll notice the view changed just a little bit when I turned it on and that's so that it has wiggle room to stabilize and account for any motion uh, in your imagery so we take it back off we'll get a slightly wider field of view now EIS I'm sure will work on your battery harder as well so you'll have to just play and get a feel for that whether or not you actually want to use it uh, remotely uh, especially if you're hard mounted and you're not on a moving something or other uh, it wouldn't make sense to me to use your EIS and it probably will drain your battery faster uh, same thing we still have HDR for video mode we'll take that back off uh, you have your 720p or 360p video resolution mode and why you would take 360 I don't know uh, not when you have five hours plus of recording on a 32 gig card so uh, 720p or the or the other now here's uh, your frame rate and you can do slow-mo which I'm not sure how slow of a frame rate that is but uh, your choices are slow-mo 7.5 15 24 30 or 60 frames a second now right now I'm set at 24 frames a second which is kind of cinema standard so let's go ahead and we've been looking at static images so now I'm gonna I'm scratching the top of this uh, where I'm filming from just so you can see the lag now if you'll notice that's 24 frames a second now let me go to 60 frames a second if I can get it to pop up there oh I am and I'm being stupid okay let's go to 60 frames a second but there's still a lag right so uh, that will change how you're recording but the frame rate you're going to see on your screen is limited by bandwidth and and what it can shove to your phone and that may vary with your phone as well how fat how, how much horsepower you've got processor in your phone so let's go ahead and we'll take a clip at 60 frames a second now you'll notice I get the little tick sound on the camera to say hey you're recording and you'll notice that I'm getting some jumping around as I'm doing this and it is actually recording on the unit at 60 frames right now but our update we're seeing isn't that so let's go ahead pause that <coughs> excuse me and now we'll drop it down to we'll just say 15 frames now we're in live view and I'm really not seeing much of a difference in my live view going from 15 to 60 frames so let's go into record mode again uh, not much of a difference oh should have hit stop first okay so so that's it of course we also have our our grayscale or black and white green and our color modes as well for video so that's pretty much it for those two modes now uh, we'll go back and in in, in, uh, take a look here real quick at 
are two videos, three videos. Mm, no, that's a JPEG, JPEG. Oh, we were in device, sorry. I believe it's going, yes, it's uh, so. Okay, so here's our 15 frame per second video. And of course, it's going to load preview. And I don't know when it says preparing preview if it's just partially buffering or if it's actually loading the whole file. It's certainly taking a little bit of time here, right? Okay. Let me back up again here. Oh, previewed. Okay. So apparently it's saving some previewed image on the phone without necessarily uh, <clears throat> without necessarily saving the, the whole file. So it must be at a lower, maybe a lower resolution or something. Now you'll notice the second clip was, uh, maybe it was a little bit longer, but it was also shot at 60 frames a second. So a lot more data that it has to, to punch through. So uh, we'll let this render and we'll take a look at this and then we'll go on and we'll, uh, and we'll look at the, uh, talk about the last mode before we uh, go outside and play. Oh, slower in molasses in January. Painfully slow. Uh, sorry about the delay. I may chop, I may chop a little couple seconds out of that. <clears throat> okay, so, oh, so go ahead. It's all previewing. So the video is obviously a lot smoother because we're shooting at 60 frames a second. Now, uh, one thing I did want to mention about your frame rates is, you know, when you're just observing with the psionics, you can set the shutter speed or the frame rate and get higher amplification, better amplification <clears throat> with the device. So when you're recording, keep in mind that if you have this thing set to 60 frames a second <clears throat> or uh, and probably even when it's dark out what you're going to find is that your image is going to be grainy you're going to have a lot more noise because you're limiting the shutter the electronic shutter in the psionics to 1 60th of a second to get 60 frames a second you have to use 1 60th of a second so this would be my recommendation I go back live again here uh, this would be my recommendation is if you're going to sit here and you're going to be in live view mode, leave your shutter in auto and it will, you know, in photo mode if you're just using it to view. And what that's going to do, it's going to select a shutter speed based on how much night light it needs. Now, your image may get choppier, but it'll maintain a, a certain level of quality or should. Now, if you're going to leave it in movie mode, right, what I would recommend is choose the lowest frame rate that will give you an acceptable image when you're looking at this looking through the device or recording video uh, if you choose 60 because man you want smooth video keep in mind that the noise level you're going to experience in monitoring and your videos is going to go up uh, accordingly so okay enough about the frame rates we've got one more mode to go through so let me pause this and we'll go to our loop recording function loop recording okay so let's talk about our loop recording mode now I can only do a little bit uh, of uh, the functionality of that because I'm using an Aurora Sport and the difference between the different levels of Aurora is Aurora Sport does not do motion activated video so it won't record uh, won't record based on the recoil of a firearm or the camera getting jarred, that kind of stuff. That's only on the higher end models. So uh, what we do have is we have loop record that will basically record either the 30 seconds prior to when you hit the uh, trigger button on it, or uh, which is, uh, well, let's just go ahead and show you here. You'll notice we've got the little three dot icon up top here. Uh, right now it's in the center dot, which is middle. So uh, we can go to before, if I can manage to tap it in time here. It's kind of tough when your phone's way out here. And so now we're in before mode. You'll notice the dot moved to the left of the uh, three dot array. Uh, that means it's going to record 
when you hit the button, it's going to save the preceding 30 seconds after is, of course, the 30 seconds after, which why not just use regular record? Uh, or middle, which means 15 seconds before, 15 seconds after, saved as a clip. Now, when you're going to do this, uh, I'll set it back to middle. What's going to happen is you'll notice in the middle it says click to buffer. So we'll click to buffer. <clears throat> You'll notice the camera made a sound, the psionics made a sound, and now it's currently buffering. So what it's doing is it's saving, because we're in middle mode, 15 seconds of video in a buffer. And when we go ahead and hit the trigger, what's going to happen is it will save that 15 seconds, record another 15, and then save that as a clip. And that's pretty much it, the way buffering uh, works. Now, one thing I did find is maybe this will do it. Uh, once you get it in buffering, it says click to trigger. The only way I've found to get back out of buffering is to either exit live view or to go back to another mode like uh, photo or video. So that's it, that's buffering. Now, <clears throat> uh, I've been showing you all this stuff the way you would hand hold your phone in portrait mode. Uh, things look a little different in, uh, in la if you're holding your phone landscape and you get the screen twist, and that may even vary from device to device. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop this. We'll come back. We'll just real briefly take a look at uh, how things look in landscape, and then we'll go outside and play. Landscape viewing. Okay, uh, let's talk about portrait versus landscape mode. Uh, it's one. This is going to be a real quick little deal and when we go outside I'm actually going to use it in landscape mode because it's a much better view of your device. I may even use a tablet, I'm not sure. Uh, so we're in portrait mode, right? We go to live view and we're connected. Now you've got a pretty small image on the screen suitable for you holding your phone and looking at it, right? Now this thing will swivel and go into a landscape mode when you uh, rotate it sideways. and by default the menus are going to be up and they might disappear in a little bit but if you just tap anywhere now you have a full screen display of what the psionics is transmitting right and of course you can go in start recording uh oops I, i'm in photo mode sorry uh we can go in start recording clear the menus off the screen and it's still recording okay so you can do that and still have your cake and eat it too as far as your view goes uh, we'll go ahead and stop that real quick because the battery's just about out on the psionics uh, from me playing around. So, okay, are you going to give me a hard time here? That's weird. I'm not sure what that is about. It might just be that we're low on batteries, so. Okay, well, that's a glitch. Uh, Crap happens, right? Okay, well, let's just, uh, okay. Nope, yeah, there we go. I don't know what that was all about. Communications glitch, maybe I, maybe I, it wasn't done recording before I switched, uh, switched modes here. So, uh, one thing I will say is if you'll notice, there's one thing missing when you're in landscape mode. I bring up the menu there's no way for me to get back out of live view. Uh, it's, it's just not on here, okay? So in order to do that, you have to go back to a vertical mode and then back out. And by the same token, when you go to portrait, uh, it doesn't automatically switch your media center view, but as soon as you go live, it will. So. Uh, that's one thing if you are going to mount this thing and use it in landscape mode uh, you don't want it totally hard mounted because otherwise uh, once you get in uh, you're going to have a hard time getting back out to do anything or review files or anything else so you'll want to have it on a mount like what I've got this phone on here that actually swivels and uh, maybe next rev of the software psionics will think to add a get out uh, get back out button without having to totally get out of the software. Now I will say this, okay, we're in this mode, right? Now I can go and exit the or minimize the program and come back to it. Uh, you do have that option if you wanted to uh, 
but but again, if I even if I if I go and I minimize it and I have it hard mounted, whoops, I don't want to do that, did I? Uh, if I minimize it and then I go back into it, it's going to again with your 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 no matter what you do, you're going to have to, you're going to have to flip it vertical uh, in order to do that at least on this Samsung device. So there you have it, uh, landscape mode. Sorry for the abrupt ending of the video, but originally I was going to put all the menu and software stuff up front with the live action and the outdoor footage in the back, but because of the length, I decided to mix up and change the order after the fact. So uh, at any rate, if you found value in this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps the channel out and uh, is the fuel that keeps it running. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the remote use of the Psionics Aurora. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free for download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use is prohibited without consent. Thanks for watching.